und so. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024 here at the MGM in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside Dave Vellante, my co-host and analyst. We have two guests for this segment. Uh, this is going to be a geeky one. I just want to warn everyone, <laughs> everyone watching it. I hope so. <laughs> it's Dave's delight in my my nightmare. But you know, I'm not. A, I'm not a engineer. I should qualify. That. We have Mark Genie. He is the SVP and General Manager Product at UiPath. Welcome, Mark, and Boris Crumry, VP Automation and Innovations at UiPath. Thank you so much both for coming on the Cube. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. So I'm going to start with you, Mark. And and like I said, I'm a little out of my element here. I cover <laughs> future right. version from a very different. Um, perspective, but let's dive into this technical side because we are hearing so much about AI agents. Tell our viewers a little bit about how they are connecting and c communicating and interacting with each other. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, a, an agent in isolation is really useless, right? I mean, it's a bunch, it may, might be a prompt and that's it, right? So you have to give it these tools, which is some of the tools are the applications it needs to integrate with, right? So one aspect of uh, why APIs have become so important is that the um, agents are going to communicate with all your systems of record in your business applications via via um, those APIs, right? Uh, to get structured data from other systems. But what's also really interesting about agents is that agents can have a structured output as well. You can have a JSON schema, not to, uh, you know, but you can have a JSON structured schema as the output of an agent. So then an agent can pass to data to other agents, to your business applications, or to automation robots and other robots as well, because you can structure that output into a format that can really be automatable coming out of an agent. And then the other aspect of connectivity of an agent is that uh, the agent itself is, can be invoked via an API. So that agent, right, you can call it through an API. So now the UiPath agents can fit into the whole fabric of an enterprise, right, where APIs are how the ecosystem of applications that an enterprise has and the way they get them to work together. These agents can participate and be called from other applications or other systems or platforms in your enterprise as well. Okay. So that's connectivity. All right. So I definitely have some follow-up, but I want to understand, Boris, your your role, kind of what's your swim lane, how do you spend your time? Well, I lead the uh, Automation Innovation Labs, so uh, we interact with customers, we design solutions, we actually run workshops, uh, agentic workshops, so we, but you can take our technology today and build agents already. Um, the way it would be with the uh, agent builder would be much faster. Um, so the whole principle of what that actually means, because I think we need to understand one key thing about uh, agents or RPA and the connection. Is when we started, and you remember, we had, I mean, 2018, I know, we were as kind of, you know, yeah. in that yeah. time. Go back. Um, so when, when I joined in 2017, the key point around RPA was always, oh, they're going to replace people, right? They always had this fear, but they weren't ready yet. They were just taking a portion of somebody's work. So it wasn't really a, a threat. But the whole thing about agents now is that it's taking the entire person. Now, now we're really going to replace it. Now it really is going to yeah. so Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. But, what that means, <laughs> but what that means is that we now have to kind of think about how are we going to change the way we work. So now we have agents who do all this busy work and then we have now the humans steering this and having more time to interact and you know kind of maybe have more time to create new functions and new roles so this is going to be the, the revolutionary aspect of it so when you think about it, that has always been kind of our vision from the very early on when we started with RPA but we didn't have the AI capability yet and now we have it and so the, the most challenging thing about this in the enterprise is that having access to data. In the RPA, we already solved this problem. So now, us putting agents on top and the agent structure and defining an agent like I would define a job description of a person, a role. So we are not, we are not automating processes by processes anymore. We are automating roles. We are automating organizations. And that leads us to the other aspect of uh, agentic orchestration, meaning 
once we have built one agent and different roles, they have to play with each other and they have to play with humans and so forth. And that's what we're kind of addressing, right? With the agentic orchestration. So we're solving two things right away with our technology. I think we are the best technology to enable that. So I'd like to understand how we get there. And Mark, the acquisition of cloud elements, I always thought the rationale was you get instant you know, integrations. I think you guys had a, hundreds of, yep. of integrations. And there, there perhaps was more, like technology to enable more integrations, but I, I didn't fully understand that. So it'd be, it'd be good if you could actually clarify that. So you, you, it, it, our, uh, UiPath automatically got more integrations, yep. connections, which are key, um, especially to this future. No yep. question those back-end yeah. connections are, are critical. And is there also technology to enable, or was it more just tribal knowledge? To uh, yeah, no, absolutely. So um, yeah, and just in the, in the background, right? So I was a founder of Cloud Elements. We sold that three, uh, a little over three years ago. Well, in fact, we talked at theCUBE uh, right. three years yeah, ago yeah. Um, after we launched uh, integration service, which is uh, UiPath API integration automation services. We embedded Cloud Elements uh, into UiPath to provide really iPaaS level of capability of integration in the platform. Um, we have hundreds of uh, connectors to all leading business applications, the Workdays, the ServiceNows, the Salesforces, SAPs that companies use. But um, there's so many, right? There's millions and millions of applications with APIs and a variety of APIs. So we also have this capability connector builder. And so our customers can now uh, wrap into our platform and give an agent a tool to access a system that maybe we don't have an out of the box connector for. Maybe it's a specific to the pharmaceuticals industry like Eat the Viva or something like that. And um, our uh, RPA developers can come in instantly, grab the specification for that API um, expose it into our platform, um, and then now give it as a tool for robots and agents to both to be able to use to safely access through a secure infrastructure um, any application that has an API. So it's a very open ecosystem, and our, our, our automation developers have built um, hundreds and hundreds of connections to other uh, systems, in addition to the ones that we provide outside the, uh, out of the box. So it's this uh, ever-expanding ecosystem that um, you know feeds on itself and uh, adds more connections and more connectivity. And that, you know, as Boris was saying, you think about all the tools that somebody needs to do their job, right? Access to the the variety of systems that you need to do to your, your your job. It's not just personal productivity applications. It's it's systems of record. It's it's uh, design applications, whatever it might be. But all those have APIs, or if they don't, we have the UI automation piece as well that brings it together. And both of those can be used by an agent to reliably access those business systems and use that through those API connections or through UI automation to do it. And then that gives them the, the tool they need to go update or read or retrieve supplier information or employee information. But in the way we've implemented it in our platform, you have very granular control. So you can say, I'm just going to give the agent an API just to go read data but they can't go update it or delete it, right? So now you have this governance of the uh, of agent in a control level um, because you can have the granularity of the type of access via the API that you um, you give the agent just for what you want it to do as a, for its set of responsibilities. Including update if I want it to update. If you want it to update. So th that's, the, that's the the key point, you're not just sucking data out of the back end, you know, the the, the, yep. the transaction systems, if you will, you can actually interact with them in a two way. That's a really important point, because I want to sort of play out for the audience and in my mind, how this sort of stack evolves. And so, you've got the connectors, that's really important, to you know, name a, a popular apps, so you've got to have that. And it, so the worlds of analytics and transactions are very much separate today. Basically, the analytics system sucked the exhaust out of the the operational systems, <laughs> yes. and then they instantly become an asynchronous historical record of the truth. So we're looking in the rearview mirror. Yeah. And and we, our vision, and, and maybe it's going to take a decade to play out, but there's a journey along the way, is that we can build a digital representation of our enterprise. That's what we get really excited about in real time. And to do that, you have to have those back-end connections. Yeah. Check, you got that. Then there's this data layer, you know, kind of the snowflakes of the world, or maybe it's the modern data warehouses from whether it's Google or Databricks or Microsoft, yeah. yes, all those guys. Yeah. And that's not your space, but that, the, the, but we interact with it. I mean, you, yeah. you have yeah. to. Yeah. But what, what they're missing, 
is they don't have a way to harmonize all that that data. And that's uh, kind of not your swim lane, but I kind of get stuck there because people have said, well, humans don't have a way to harmonize it either. Well, they do. They have to just use heavy <laughs> lifting. Right. So yeah, just the agents numbing, will be no yes. better off than the humans. So, so that's, that's part of the journey because to get to that digital representation of a real-time enterprise, you have to have agents or at least a system that's able to harmonize that data or else it's better because we're replacing the humans with, with bots, but it's still not real time, okay? But so let's park that because that's yeah, let's yeah. Say 10 years away. Then you've got this really important piece of real estate, what we call the agent control framework. Mm -hmm. And it's able to ingest um, top-down guidance, I'll call it metrics, goals from the organization saying this, this is what we want go make it happen. And then you, now you've got the connection, connections to the back end so you can orchestrate a bottom-up workflow. This is the vision that we put forth. How close is it to what you guys envision is possible within the near and mid-term and even long-term? Yeah, you want to start with that one, Boris? Well, I, I think, you know, um, depending on the task you're, try, you're trying to solve, for the simpler task that, he, that you would also assign a human to do, um, harmonizing data or whatever particular yep. need you have, um, that is something you can actually also do today with on, on UI path. It just takes a little bit longer. The, the, the agent builder will be much faster to accelerate this. But yeah, you can build this in, in this case. So for example, I've, I've built an um, agentic PMO. You know, when, when you have a project to do and, and uh, you always have one guy who's kind of chasing up and have you done this and that? Yes, right. It's, it's an awful job, right? So yes, that's right. That's right. When, I, when I, used to, I used to do outsourcing transitions, that was, you know, I had two or three analysts that was just chasing these people. And I can completely um, have an agentic PMO that does this, even negotiating um, the delivery date for this particular deliverable. Um, so, um, and then asking on a weekly basis uh, um, the status and getting all the updates. So that's an entire person I'm replacing. So that kind of task, just as an example, you know, I can you know, absolutely do today. Now imagine in your harmonization example, the biggest challenge in data is it's, it's there, you know, who, which company in the world has 100% accurate data? Exactly. <laughs> So we could have an agent that would um, follow up and uh, you know, check the data, follow up to the human, as suggested in context grounding or the organization, so wouldn't know where to go. But every agent has an owner. That's where comes the escalation point in our uh, agentic builder. So it has an owner. That means if, there's, um, if, if the agent gets stuck, it can kind of contact that person and that person could kind of help and, ad help and advise. But now what ha what's happening is that this agent would collect the information. Whilst the people are working, I said, oh, by the way, here's the question. Is that data? Is that correct or so forth? And, and he said, no, no, they are, I don't have this laptop anymore. It's, uh, <laughs> you have to you know, change that in the, okay, I, I've never seen this or whatever. So it, it runs in the background. It's like a constant inventory management and can check and validate data because we have now these agents that we could not employ any humans to do but they're running in the background. And the same way, we are going to design agents that help people to find their automation opportunities. So we could say, okay, let's, let's find out the finance department, where are all our opportunities. We can build those agents that go and qu ask those questions and collect this, feed this into our automation hub. And then after some time, it automatically publishes. and so here's your pipeline. So this is the vision where, where we're going and, and kind of uh, you know, create that digital twin uh, in a way, and, and getting that data accurate, because now we have these helpers. <laughs> but there's so, so much what of a an agent needs, though, is not structured data. Yeah. So not, right. you know, McKinsey estimates 90% of the uh, information in an organization isn't in a structured form, it's unstructured. It may be in emails and service tickets yeah. and chats and calls and, and uh, unstructured long co you know, contracts, lease agreements, whatever it might be. And so much of the work that hasn't been automatable uh, relies on that unstructured information. And that's why, the, 
like now with this dawn of agents, right, agentic processing, part of what really enables that is an LLM's ability to understand these unstructured documents, these long complex agreements or contracts that you couldn't work with before, right? A lot of the, a lot of the tasks that agents are taking over are researching, analyzing, you know, quoting something. And so I need to be able to go in and get structure out of what has been previously unstructured as well. And that's part of what, um, one of the most important tools that we give our agents at UiPath is the ability, is with our document understanding capability and our intelligent document processing, is to be able to turn all forms of unstructured information into a structured input. And this is coming back to that, you know, why, you know, and turn it into a structured input that an agent can use and then also go update those data stores or others now that we've, you've never been able to do before. We, got a, we have an insurance company that has processed hundreds of thousands of policies that they didn't even understand before from acquisitions and companies they, they've acquired that they didn't know what was in those policies. And now we've, they've got, you know, a, between the combination of this document intelligence and um, the, the ability to uh, for the agent to process is now to extract and understand what that information is and actually make your data stores now better, right? Because you're turning it into. And we can all see the benefit that would have for the decision makers within that organization, yeah. but it also has tremendous value for the customers who can also, or the normal people who have insurance policies, who can yeah. say, who can talk to that exactly. data and ask it questions and find out information that they so badly need too. Absolutely. So yeah. humans are pretty amazing when you think about what we do. There's a yeah. lot of domain expertise. We've heard the term tribal knowledge. We love that term. They understand what steps need to be taken and you have step-by-step -step capabilities. They understand the dependencies in a project. Hey, that, that deadline's not good enough. You got to do better. Um, they reason, right? Humans can reason. So agents ultimately are going to be able to, have to be able to do all of these things and, yeah. and, and interpret reasoning traces from humans and learn from that. Yeah. Um, is, is that technically feasible in the next I don't know, midterm even, or long term? They're doing it now. I mean, and if you really look at um, the most successful, and what we really look at is agents, you know, Boris talked a bit about that digital twin future where, you know, it can do a whole um, role, multiple responsibilities, but initially what we're focused on is, is agents is, is a decomposition of a process down to individual tasks. Like, you know, as a manager, I hire people, I have to plan work, I, I have to research things, what our competitors are doing, plan for product releases and things like that. So to ask one agent to do all that type of work is really difficult. But if I had an agent to help me research competition, a research agent that could go do that for me, create an analysis and all the rest of it, um, and then I could pass that to another agent that says, for um, um, some of the aspects of a product plan, that would be another specialized agent. So part of what, our, what, what we really look at and what's so amazing about our platform is we know how to orchestrate you know, thousands of robots um, you know, for our customers. Well, we can do the same thing with agents. You can make them granular at first and then have them these sub-agents that then get grouped together to handle your whole job function eventually. So the orchestrator has to be able to, so the agents have to work with other agents, humans collaborate, agents yeah. are going to have to collaborate. They also, he's I wonder if they have to come into the office. Back to work. But you may laugh. It may be that you know, at some point somebody will want to visualize the agents in a kind of virtual workplace so mm. that they can integrate. Just because us humans, it's easier to, oh, where are my agents? I yeah. <laughs> understand that. They're, they, they, yeah. they also need to be able to use tools. Yeah. And they're experts at tools, exactly. multiple tools, yeah. not yeah. just one tool. So yeah. you've got I used to term, I like the term swarms of agents. Yeah. yeah. And so you guys have to, you're going after being able to manage and orchestrate and control yeah. that. That is your sweet spot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And having the excess and control over the data through the robotic approach through the RPAs. So, yeah. What do people pay for? I presume they pay for the platform and the system. Maybe not. Do they pay for the agent? I mean, they're going to be building their own agents, right? Uh, what are yeah. they paying for? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the robots, the agents, and then we have this 
AI units, as, yeah. you know, the, the AI that you infuse into them as well, um, you know, is a monetization factor as well on our platform, right? Yeah. So, because the, the agent will run as a, what's powerful about our process, our, our platform is an agent will run as another process in our orchestrator. We already, that's a foundational differentiating part of our platform is that orchestration layer. Those are processes running there as robots. Well, agents run as another process. So think about it in terms of almost like a, you know, a super powered robot running, uh, you know, in this uh, platform. And, um, and then it has calls to the models itself where, it, you know, it's getting that plan and, and, and other capabilities. And that's, a, that, that's valuable and worth, and we can charge for that as well. Okay, so uh, does software economics change? I mean, I, I, guess, I guess not. It's still non-recurring engineering. There are some, some costs of running LLMs that are maybe new. And yeah. unique. But I mean, we've got compute costs today, and we kind of understand that pretty well. Cloud costs, you know. That's where you can use our Gen AI connectors. So with the Gen AI connectors, you can connect to any of your own chosen uh, LNMs that you want to use, embed into your workflows, and then you can use ours uh, that go through the trust layer. Um, and this is kind of the, these are the managed LNMs that we provide. So this is ensuring that you have the full openness, um, which goes back to your question around you know, reasoning and capabilities of LNMs. If you look at how quickly the LNMs have advanced, I mean, the fact that, I think when, when the first interviews with, with Jan de Kuhn were can check in our beta and say, oh, so this LNMs, they, are, they, they can't reason, or it's about. Um, so this whole agenda approach actually came into play just to kind of solve some of the limitations of LNMs. But now we already kind of, you know, we have a GPT or one model, right? That is good at reasoning. Right. Um, not completely, but it's good. Yeah. It's reasoning as a, so all these kind of selection and understanding of what kind of LNM do you use and so forth. That's exactly what our platform enables to all those choices, right? And your question will will this you know improve? There will be. I mean, it's it's advancing significantly. So it's just a matter of a, of a year or so or two that then we have you know totally different LNMs that. Have we specially tuned for reasoning challenges, for planning challenges, and so forth, which we immediately adopt into our platform? I'm glad, Boris, you brought up the trust layer because I want to yeah. understand this better. Like, what? Paint a picture of what that is and how the agents and the bots actually interact with that trust layer. How how you inject that governance throughout the system? Yeah, yeah. So the um, the trust layer is a um, is is a layer within our platform that all calls out to um, LLMs out to these models goes through that layer. Um, we only use models that have, um, there is no data retention, zero re data retention out at the model. There's not even log data is stored out of any model that goes through the trust layer. Um, so first of all, you know, it gives co co uh, customers confidence that their, mo their data is not being used to train a model, not stored out at a model. Um, the other thing that the um, trust layer does is give you full auditability and governance. I can turn off a, a particular users or agent, a digital worker's access to a model, let's say, if, uh, uh, you know, I see some, you know, it, it, you know, if I'm not comfortable with what it's uh, doing or how it's performing, but I have full auditability. Every single call to a model, um, the prompt and the response is all audible in one place. So now that they, they gives our customers the, the confidence to be able to understand how these uh, agents are performing, meet compliance requirements, but more importantly, it also informs the agent as, as it's running, the data we collect there. And we can, the agent can learn from that and you can also see evaluations and score how well the agent is performing its job. So just like you rate employees, you know, think of evaluations <laughs> as, a, you know, it's a rating of the uh, agent and how well it's functioning. How many times did a human have to interact? How many times did it give a wrong answer or all that? We score all that, capture that through this trust layer, feed it back to the agents, and then that's provided in, in the evaluations. And this is, this is a really big differentiator in platform. So much of effort with agents right now is about desi design time evaluations while you're building the agent, right, offline and, and looking at evaluates. Our platform already has all that data on how robots run and, and being able to audit their effectiveness, we're able to feed that into these agents as they're running so they can get better, they can get more data and more information fed back to them and prove over time or shut them down if they're not doing what you want them to do. 
<laughs> so what do you, I, I usually ask this question in one year time frame, but I think a lot of the conversation is, is, is looking to the future. Let's go 24 months. What do, you, what do you want to be able to say in 24 months that you can't say today? Yeah, with that yeah. one? Yeah. yeah, sure. So in 24 months, we want to be able to show you customers who kind of um, created an augmented agentic department. So having humans and agents working together, being able to perform the task together and uh, creating a totally faster circling time and whatever they do, uh, not just productivity, but really the, the speed of work that they can do and how it has changed them. And I think the bigger challenge is actually the, the change management aspect for the humans, less so much the sure. technology. Right? No. Uh, it's almost like what others actually has always kind of warned us about. But but this is actually where it, it, it goes. And I think the only kind of factor that makes it slower, this development, is, is us humans kind of trying to adopt with it now. Yeah, and I would say this uh, ability, this this idea that you're going to have a teams of digital workers, right? These um, these agents will be able to. to I, I talked about specialized agents, right? That can be more accurate. They have a narrower set of responsibilities. Where they're going is you'll you'll give the agent a wide range of responsibilities, and it'll be able to execute those effectively. So more like a what one of your employees would do, right? And you know, Sam Altman is uh, you know described uh, you know the future of of agents is don't think of them as just your lowest level uh, employee or just of an assistant. Think of them as um, the best person on your staff, the, you know, the, the uh, senior executive level type of skills where they're going to get to and be able to operate to. And I think that's a, that's a good vision for the future, right? That they, these aren't just doing, just researching and analyzing, but they're doing entire jobs and they're doing it as well as the best people on your team. Yeah. All right, that's an exciting I, I, future. I, think I just want to make one other comment. Last year, I think it was here, Brent, Eric Brynjolfsson spoke. Was, wasn't at this conference? Yeah, it was. Yeah, and he yeah. said he'd be disappointed if he didn't if we didn't see at least a four plus point percent improvement in productivity. We've been talking about yeah, productivity. Yeah, yeah. I, I reused two years because I think that's going to be the start of a of a productivity yeah. boom. Yeah, which is going to be pretty transformative for the hopefully for the economy and and, 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 and for our lives. basis and for exactly. our lives. Yeah, exactly. Well, Mark and Boris, it's a pleasure John. having you on. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Let's see.